What up, world? It's your dog, Bangy. You're now rocking with the greatest podcast on earth. The penthouse television. Let's go. That nigga want me better put 250 in my ear. These bitches always talking down but taking notes for years. Dark cocky nigga, he been on my ass for years. I put this pussy on him, he ain't been the same since. And all them old bitches mad, yeah, that makes sense. And why your baby mama stalking shit, it makes sense. Oh, that's 24 shit, I guess it makes sense. Bad bitch, no life, though. Y'all cute, but be hype, though. My bitches get real hype, though. Ain't gotta fight, catch flights, hoes. Sleep this, I'm blowing kisses. Feel bad for you, sad bitch. Big bags, I'm involved in. I keep a two-week revolve in it. Top tier, no basis. Shit, I guess that's why my haters say I'm never falling off, bitch, you waiting, you gon' die on it You gon' die on it, you wasn't a rider You wasn't really down to die for shit Ain't no rap, bitch, no fake shit No none of that going over here That nigga want me, better put 250 in my ear yeah. These bitches always talking down Been taking notes for years Dark cocky nigga, he been on my ass for years I put this pussy on him, he ain't been the same since And all them old bitches mad, yeah, that makes sense And why your baby mama stalking shit, it makes sense Oh, that's 24 shit, I guess it makes sense Bad bitch, no life, though Y'all cute, but be hype, though My bitches get real hype, though Ain't gotta fight, catch flights, hoes Sneak this, I'm blowing kisses I feel bad for you, sad bitch Big bags, I'm involved in it I keep it till we revolve, send it Top tier, no basic shit I guess that's why my haters say I'm never falling off Bitch, you waiting, you gon' die on it You gon' die on it You wasn't a rider You wasn't really down to die for shit Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking with that Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your dog, Bangy, the host of the Penthouse Podcast, and we have a very, very, very special guest. And honestly, it's our first time even having a female in the Penthouse for an interview. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her introduce herself. What's good, y'all? This your girl, 24 Care. Follow me on Instagram, 24 underscore K-A-R-R-A-T. What's popping? And what I want y'all to do is make some noise. Thank you, thank you. How you been? How you been? I'm good. How you been? I've been good. I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, you're doing a lot of shit right now. You got the movies going on. You got your modeling shit going on. You got your acting shit going on. You got the music shit going on. Mm-hmm. Where, where does where's, where does all this, this talent come from? Man, I don't know. I'd be asking my mom the same thing. Like, damn, just multi, just multi-talented. Like, yeah, you in your bag. You definitely got that <laughs> talent for yeah, sure. Thank um, you. For the people that don't know, let's start off here. Where were you born? I was born in Lima, Ohio. Lima, so you're not actually from Columbus. I'm not from Columbus. Columbus raised me, though. Columbus raised you, and how early did you actually move to Columbus? I came to Columbus when I was like eight. Okay, okay. So for the most part of your life, you basically Columbus raised. Yeah. What side of town? Man, we was bouncing all around. We didn't. We didn't went to the <laughs> east side from Greenbrier to the fucking short north to to Fort Finney to fucking uh, where else we go after that? And then we went out west. Our West is really where I grew up at, though. So that, so the West Side, okay, yeah. okay. I never heard you speak on the West Side, yeah. so I would have never known that. Um, I find you super classy, but you also got this like hood turnt side to you. Like it's like the perfect balance. How? Where would you say that comes from? Like, how? Describe your childhood. How? How you got to that point? Um, well, I was raised up. My mom was always there, but I was raised up by my grandmother. I call her Ganny. My Ganny, my granddad. I stayed with them. They was, like, super popping, super on their shit, like, you know. And then, you know, I had an aunt, too, that was, like, super, super classy, like, you know, degreed up, all that. And she just took me up under her wing. My grandmother took me up under her wing, always told me how to be a lady, how to be respectful, how to use your manners and shit like that. But then on the flip side, I also had my uncles who was real-life gorillas who was moving bricks, <laughs> like, trash bags full of money and shit. I seen it, like getting raided from the feds, like, and then one of my uncles treated me like a princess, rest in peace, Uncle Vaughn, he treated me like a princess, and then my other, my, my other Uncle Baldy, he was just real raw and uncut, like, and I'm talking about 9, 10, 11, I'm talking, he's talking about pussy, dick, hoe, bitch, he don't give a fuck, he let me know raw, so I feel like me seeing them get active, like, I done seen some shit, it was like a perfect balance. That's cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So basically, raised raised mo- more so by the woman in your family, but you still had that touch from the, the male figures in your family yeah. also. Yeah. Perfect. Um, when it comes to the music, um, I, a lot of people may not know, like I said, but you you super hard with the music. Your lyrics <laughs> go crazy. The, the intro song we came into, the way you put it together, like I said, you classy, but the way you was rapping on that shit, like you popping your shit like a nigga, like, nigga, <laughs> don't try me. like. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the dopest thing. Sometimes in business, when it comes to um, putting people in position, men have a lot of power um, with that. Do you find in the industry sometimes when you're trying to get put in certain positions or reach certain accolades, do you do you have to do you find yourself dealing with men or males sometimes who try to may try to like take advantage of you or try to 
get more out of you than it's called for to basically get ahead? Oh yeah, most definitely. All how do you how do you deal with that type of situation? Um, so I was raised around all boys. It was all boys in my house, from my cousins to my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I know how to like make shit work in my favor. You know. Um, so when when dudes come at me and they like telling me what they can do for me and all this and all that, I let them believe that they got the power. But I know <laughs> what's going on in my head. You know what I'm saying? So I just really use that to my advantage. Like, I'm gonna let you think you got it. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't gonna, we ain't gonna fuck and we ain't gonna get that close, but, you know, when it's necessary, I'll let it know. I'll let a motherfucker know what it is, but, you know, I'll have my way until it's time for a motherfucker get to touch me. Then it's like, hold on, dude. Like, you gonna treat a lady like that? What you want? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's real shit. (laughs) But it, it must be hard, though, as a female artist chasing that knowing that you have to put up with that, like, men chase it, men are chasing it, but we don't have to deal with that side of it. Unlike yeah. women, especially for a woman that ain't on that type of shit or on that type of time, mm-hmm. I know it got to be hard. What's some advice that you would give women as far as how to carry themselves when handling business, dealing with different types of, of men and, and, and things of that nature? I would say make sure your paperwork is right. Make sure the back end of everything, legalize everything. Make sure you know and study your craft, whatever that may be, it, whatever that may be that you're doing, study that so you know what the fuck going on, you know what I'm saying, and have everything set up if you can, and then just, just stand on your own, you know what I'm saying, like, don't, don't be afraid to tell people no, and then you can still be classy and be a lady about it, but stand firm, like, don't fall for a fucking shiny chain, and, you know what I'm saying, like, don't, don't fall for it, you know what I'm saying, just know your work, and keep your legs fucking closed, (laughs) like, for real, that's how you gonna get far, keep your legs closed, and just handle your business, you know. Cause man, I feel like men really do respect that more. As much as as much as we be wanting to fuck for real, we really yeah. do is respect it when a when a female make us work for or ain't ain't just so easy. Really, you know I feel like it's just like I don't know. It just seems like niggas don't care about that no more. Nah, I say sir, it, it just depends when you are, when you dealing with men that's like got they shit together, know what they want out of life. They know what they're doing as far as handling business. That's a different type of man. Now, I can't speak for the right. other niggas that's on the other shit, the little boy shit or whatever. I can't speak for them, but yeah. for the most part, um, I've been seeing a lot of promo with the, the Female Hustler 2 on the way. Yes. Let's First off, the Female Hustler 1 is out now on Tubi. Make sure y'all go stream that, go run stream that up. That. Shout out the whole cast. The movie is dope. How did you even get into the position of being one of the starring characters in it? Um, oh, Hustle? man. So me and Dom, like, was close. You know, Dom was, like, yeah, Dom. doing shout videography. Out the yeah, shout out Dom Campbell. That's the director of it. You know, the writer, producer, all that good shit. I'm a producer, too, y'all. I, I done made my way on the back end. You feel me? <laughs> we, <But> we, <laughs> did, you, did, did you have any producer credits in this actual movie, or is this some other stuff that you... Ooh, yeah, that's fire. See, yeah. you really, see, you smart. You smart. You figuring yeah. this shit I'm out. I'm learning as I go. I'm learning. So y'all, you and um, Dom's relationship landed you the role, the starring, for the starring um, role in Female Hustler. Mm-hmm. And when you got that role, was it something that you felt you were prepared for? Were you nervous? Did you, was you like, let's get it. I'm ready. Or? I was like, like, first of all, a brief synopsis. I was like, he was like, I need somebody to play in this movie. I got, I wrote this movie, da, da, da. I hit him up on Instagram. I'm like, nigga, it's me, duh. Like, I'm the star. What you mean? Like, don't try to act like that. Don't don't be cute, nigga. You know, like yeah. that. And he like, man, all right, I'm going to send you the script. And then we're going to rehearse it. And I'm like, cool, let's do it. And he sent me the script. We met up at the library with a couple other um, actors and actresses and stuff. And um, we went over the script. And he was like, okay. And then we start shooting. And it was just like... Dom know me so much that the female hustler is really me. Princess is really <laughs> tell me tell me what your tell me what your favorite scene of that movie was for the for for the female hustler one. What was your favorite scene as far as like I had so much fun shooting that day or this was such a different experience or that scene like which one was your favorite scene of that whole movie? California. The California scene. We was in Cali. Man, Cali living like Everybody, that's where my heart is at. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to buy me a house in California. Too, Cali turn, man. I love California. It just make my heart smile. It's just, it's just different. So yeah, that was my favorite scene though, California for sure. Who was, who was um one of your favorite cast members working with on the movie? Honestly, as much as I can't stand his big headed ass Dom, he's the one who played <laughs> Omar. Cause this nigga like he dead ass will be Dom like you know he'll be speaking properly and he's like orchestrating shit. 
And then he put on that hat, nigga. He put mm-hmm. on the hat and he put Turn the glasses Turn into a whole on. different character. And he be like, um, oh, yeah, uh, so. <laughs> I'm like, this nigga is like, he is talented as fuck. Yeah. So I like working with him man. because, you know, we we can we bounce off of each other. You know what I'm saying? We work really well together. And the whole crew is turning. I pretty much brought the whole crew back for two, right? Yeah. Like, pretty much everybody's in there. Mm-hmm. Without giving too much away, what can we look forward to in two, like, is there any surprises or what can we look forward to with the vibe of two female husbands? Murder, two? she wrote. <laughs> it's about to be turned. Like, I'm talking about as soon as you cut on the female husband too, you're going to be like, damn. Like, it's going down. Like, it's, it's getting, we getting real active. I would say more action. It's more action based than the first one was. And the story is just turned. And then we got, you know, we got some, we got some, well, we got a celebrity. We got two celebrities in this one. Uh, y'all got the, um, the what's the guy from Big, that played in Biggie? I seen him in yeah, um, Jamal. Jamal, he's yeah. super talented. And yeah. who's the other celebrity? Uh, we got Raindrop. Raindrop, shout yeah. out Raindrop. She yeah. doing her thing too. We definitely gonna get drop on the podcast yeah, too. Yeah, shout out Drop. <laughs> I love how passionate you are about your craft and what you do. And I could tell, like, even in the movie, when I was speaking with my dog Rue, I was like, man, I think Courtney really gave that role like her all. It was um, another guy that really did good acting in there, too. Um, he had, like, one of the sex scenes. I'm not sure of his name, but he did really good. But I feel like the passion overall that you gave really helped sell that movie and yeah, that script. And I just you. love your passion for everything. Um, tell us about the point where you, in your career, where you felt like acting was something you wanted to do. Like, was that something you wanted to do your whole life? Or did you just wake up one day, like, this opportunity, I'm going to take it? Or did you always say, I'm, I want to act, like, I want to get into this? So I will say, okay, so when I was younger, I used to mock everybody. Mm -hmm. I could dead ass talk like you, act like you, (laughs) talk like anybody, you know? So I always had that talent. You're an impressionist. You can do impressions. Yeah, I can do impressions really good. And I'm going to start doing that, too. I'm going to start monetizing. But, like, I I, I always was like that. So um, when I, I, honestly, this shit seems surreal for real. Like, for a lot of people to know, for it to be most trending, most popular, most recommended on to be number one. Big, like, that's big. That was I was like, damn. And then people just reaching out from me from reaching out to me from all over the world. I was like, wow, like people really love me. So me, for me, it's like I don't I don't know. It's just good. Then we did another one, another movie too, Temporary Suspensions yeah, as I, well. Let's talk about that yeah. movie. Um that wasn't the first one, was it? No. That was the second one, correct? That's the second one. What do you one feel you did. learned from the transition of the first one to the second movie? What do you feel was the difference as far as your acting skills and what you learned? Um, so I learned a lot. Because at first, the first movie, I was looking dead at the camera. You're like, stop looking <laughs> at the damn people. camera. Like, you know, you always tell me I that. think that's like a common thing for people that first start doing it, though. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I learned a lot. And then I played a different a different role. I played a, a, um, a psychic witch. Yeah, so you got into a different type of bag. Yeah, and then element. and then for me, I haven't seen it yet, but for everyone that has seen it on the back end, they like, you turned that movie up. And I'm just like, so I can really act. Like, this is, no, this is some good shit. So I, everything I do, I just do good. Like, I'm just great. To me, acting seems like as, as many things as you do, as many hats as you wear, acting seems like your element, though, your happy place. If yeah. you had to choose, would it be acting or would it be the music career? And you could do both, obviously, but I'm just asking, like, if you had to choose, which yeah. one? Which one? It would most do? definitely be acting. acting. It would most definitely be acting, but I will say I'm never gonna stop writing because I always like I'll write, but I don't record all the time. But like I feel like it's something about music too. I just have to really discipline myself because when I hear a beat, I get chills in my body, and I'm like, I'm about to spaz. I think you hard with the music shit, though. I definitely think Thank you need you. to tap back into your music shit. Full I am. Circle Third too. quarter is going crazy. Like, I got a plan of action. It's going crazy. And let's, sure. let's talk about your other business venture um, that you started as well that you mentioned. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. So, um, so it's 24K Cosmetics. So, I have a skincare line that is com- coming up um, that I'm going to be introducing soon. Uh, it's an organic skincare line. I'm going to have like a natural oil that you'll be able to put, a natural serum that you'll be able to put on your face day and night, beard oils, um, turmeric soaps, you know what I'm saying, like hydro jelly mask and stuff like that. It's really natural, organic-based. Like people don't know what, like 
that, but I'm really like a herbalist. Like I love like natural herbs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I love what it do to the body, the benefits it has for the body. So, so if it wasn't, so if you weren't doing the acting thing and your music and everything, you think you would be full into the the, the um the herbalist? Oh yeah, most definitely. Like I want to take a holistic class and everything. Like I'm into gardening and everything. Like I love how food works. I love nature. Like that's my element for real. Are you one of those healthy eaters? Like you only eat clean stuff and you don't like. And I be bullshitting, but when I tap <laughs> back in, I be when I tap back in, I do good though. And when is the um, cosmetic line set to drop? When can we look forward to that? Um, so I don't have an exact set date because I'm making everything, too. Oh, so you, you're doing this in-house? Yeah, I'm doing it in-house. I have, like, I probably got, like, 60 bottles of my oils made, um, and I probably got, like, 100 soaps. But it's time-consuming. You know, you learn and you grow. So um, Is, this your, I would own, say is this your own original recipe? Yeah. Okay. That's this the, is things that I've researched and stuff, like... When I moved to Atlanta, I was just in the house just researching shit. Real estate and, um, and like, food, how food works. Yeah, so. That's dope. Tell us about um, a tough point in your career or your life where you felt defeated and, like, giving up or, like, giving up. And what did you do to get through it? Man, I just got over some shit. When I moved to Atlanta a year and a half ago, so 2021. Was that 2021? Yeah, a year and a half ago. Or 2020. I think it was at the end of 2020. A year um, and a half ago. Was yeah. Tw- yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that was so rough for me. Like, first of all, I didn't really realize, like, I'm, I was in Atlanta until, because I was running back and forth. But when I got to Atlanta, it was, like, a lot of things that I had to face personally. Like, I had a lot of skeletons and a lot of things I had to work on, heal on, meditate, you know, do yoga. Mm-hmm. That was challenging for me. And, you know, I don't have a lot of family. I don't have really no family in, in Georgia. So that was really challenging for me. You know what I'm saying? It didn't ju- it just being me and my son. So, um, but now I feel like, okay, now I'm finally getting the hang of things the blessings is opening up yeah they starting to open up because i start going outside i was in the fucking house but i had to heal i wanted to heal first i didn't want to take that 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 heavy energy everywhere with me because it's not nobody else's you know nobody else's that makes sense um, so yeah. that makes sense so um, a musician a model cosmetic line holder business owner actor a mom where do you find time to actually just I got a do, vending machine, too. Got a vending machine <laughs> business, like yeah. a jack of all trades, as some may say. When do you find time to just, like, do 24 care, like, just to vibe out to yourself or do things that you like with all this stuff going on, juggling all this? So my daily routine is get up. I get up super early, um, and I meditate, and I do yoga, um, and I listen to, like, instrumentals and stuff like that. And then um, once a week, I take love bath. So my love bath is, like, I put... Um, like real roses, real sunflower, you know, flowers and stuff in my tub and mm-hmm. like bath sauce and stuff like that, light my candles and it's dark. I might have a glass of wine, I might not, I might write, I might not, but I'm just chilling in my tub, you know what I'm saying, meditating because that's going to recharge me and I'm burning my sage every day, all day. <laughs> What's some stuff you like to do, like like hobbyist like wise when you ain't working working like what's some stuff that you like to do um i go out and sit in nature visit nature like i just you know i go walk or you know i like to go to like different parks like butterfly museums you know what i'm saying anything i'm getting nature. A, i'm getting hippie vibes like you may have been a hippie in your past life i probably was <laughs> i probably was for real like only thing i'm missing is the weed like <laughs> <laughs> no no you don't smoke correct or no, I don't really smoke for real. Okay. Every now and again, just to, just drink a little bit. Yeah, you know I got the Remy with me all the time. VSOP I, I, me all right. So she <laughs> preferred to drinking over to smoking. Um, there's there's it's been hella rumors about basically who you date and who you talking to. Um, for the people out there, are you single? Are you dating anyone? Do you care to clear that up? I'm married to the money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was the perfect answer. I, I don't think the answer could have been any better. <laughs> She married to the motherfucking money. What's the perfect What's the perfect first date for you? The perfect first date for me is, um, of course, a guy courting me and initiating something. Surprise, like, surprise me. Like, you know, tell me, like, you know, I want you to get dressed. I want to see you. I got something planned for us. Make plans. Like, be intentional. Like, and, I, and you know, anything. Like, it don't even matter if we go on a picnic, if we're going to the movies. It don't really matter. I'm not, like, a money type of... I'm going to get the money, but... It's, it's not about that with me. It's just about, like, the thought. Like, damn, like, he really put a lot of thought into that. And if you if you bring me flowers on the front, nigga, if you bring me flowers, nigga, <laughs> fuck the YSL and, and, the, and the Gucci and the, you know what I'm saying? Flowers. I'm telling you what. And so you, you, don't, you don't get flowers a lot? I do get flowers. So often. why would that be something that's, like, on the first date? Why would that be something that's special if you already get them a lot, though? 
I mean, because I love, I told you I love nature. True. When I say facts, I dead ass and wish I could be a flower. So it's just the <laughs> fact of them doing something that's that's a detail to you paying attention to you, basically. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I love someone that pays attention. Like, you know, cause of course, cause you, if you dating or when you dating, you speak to a person. I do. You're going to speak to a person to even see if you want to go out with this person, right? So you, facts. And if a motherfucker pay attention, if I say like, oh, I love sunflowers. And they and we go on a date and that man bring me sunflowers. You, you know <laughs> what? Litty. You are right in my book. <laughs> it's Liddy. Tell me, um, what's three things you can't live without? Water, my son, and uh, mm, my mama. Okay, okay. So family and water, basically. Water. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. What's next for Twenty Four Care? Um, third quarter, we 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 get in the booth, like we going bananas, like it's set up, it's a play, it's already, you know what I'm saying, and it's already in the plan book. We just got to put the action to it. So third quarter, we focusing on the music, real heavy. Um, fall, hopefully we can be dropping some shit, cause I got a whole plan, like so that's it. You in a perfect spot. Girl. You down in the A. I yes. know it's DJs out there. I love it, and they love me. Man, listen, it's all types of connections and networking out there, yeah. and I think you just in a perfect place to blow and just make that shit slap. I'm ready for it. Like, I'm ready for real. There's so many things I want to do. That makes sense. Yeah. Tell me this. Um, when it's all said and done. What do you want 24 Carrots legacy to be? Uh, my legacy, uh, generational wealth. So that legacy of, like, we got real estate. We got fucking stocks and bonds. We into trucking. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got crops. We got farmhouses and shit on our land. We got land already. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have those assets created that I can pass down to to my, to my kids. You know what I'm saying? My kids' kids. So that's what I want to do. And then I want to be able to give away. I want to be able to give and help people and be able to, you know what I'm saying, help the younger girls know, like, if you got a dream, no matter, I don't give a fuck. I come from the projects. We grew up with, with water bugs and <laughs> roaches and, you know what I'm saying, like, real-life mice and stuff. Keep fucking going. Like, I want to be that motivation to people like them. I'm going to eventually tell my story. Oh, I'm writing a book, too, by the way. That probably won't be released till like, next year. Yeah, What's the I'm in the process. Do you have a title yet? Confidence. All right, so make sure when you, whenever you do get the book ready for release or and whenever you do get the cosmetics ready, you come back, you fuck with us so yeah. we can actually present it on a penthouse. You yeah. already know we rocking there. Most definitely, yeah. Before we get out of here, um, is there anything that you want to let your fans, your supporters know? Um, I love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me. Um, I'm a real bitch first, get money second. Break <laughs> yeah. bread with my bitches, you know? <laughs> yeah. I appreciate and you, keep 24K, going. for coming through, man. It's been it's been definitely an honor to have you on here. The first female in the penthouse. This is crazy. Um, I got so much love for uh, 24 Carat. She's a dope artist, a dope person, a dope heart, thank a you, dope spirit. You. Just just an all-around talented human being. I'm looking forward to the Female Hustler 2. Make sure y'all go stream uh, Female Hustler 1 on Tubi right now. Shout okay. out Dom and the whole cast. Y'all did amazing. Keep going. Um, also, the other movie, Temporary Suspicion. Go yeah. stream that too. What platform is that on? That's going to be on Tubi, Tubi, but it's not going to be released until September as well. So that's coming too. So make sure y'all look out for that. Uh, when is yeah. the Female Hustler 2 set to drop? We haven't set a date yet. I'll have a meeting with them tomorrow. Actually, we're going to Miami tomorrow, so we'll figure. I'll figure it out. My plan is when that, whenever that actually drops, my plan is to bring the cast on, okay. and bring y'all on, and kick it with y'all. Yeah, that's dope. That that'll be hard. That'll yeah. be hard. Let the people know where they can follow you at, find you for any of the um, adventures that you got coming up. Yep. So y'all can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at twenty four underscore carrot k a r r t. Fuck with your girl. You already know. So we live at the penthouse, man. Make sure y'all uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Penthouse TV. Make sure y'all follow the Instagram, Penthouse Television. Y'all can follow me, too, um, on IG at underscore bangy. And other than that, make sure you comment below. Let us know who y'all want to see in here next. And other than that, we out of here. No rap bitch, no fake shit, no none of that going over here That nigga want me, better put 250 in my ear These bitches always talking down, but taking notes for years Dark cocky nigga, he been on my ass for years I put this pussy on him, he ain't been the same since And all them old bitches mad, yeah that makes sense And why your baby mama stalking shit, it makes sense Oh that's 24 shit, I guess it makes sense Bad bitch, no lipo, no cute but be hype though My bitches get real hype though, ain't got a